Hello and welcome to worship. Today for our theme, we are going to be talking about this word, repent. This word which means turn around. But in particular, we're going to talk today about turning our lives toward things that are life bringing. In addition to that theme, we are blessed to have some of our five o'clock Saturday service people leading us in prayers. And so come and welcome to worship. Patient God, you call us to come back to you. Guide, Guide us to repent. repent. You cry to us to stop going away on our self-focused travels, to set aside our empty fears. Guide, Guide us to, to repent. repent. Companion of our hearts, lead us to follow you once more so that we might lead lives guided by your love and life. Guide, Guide us, us to, to repent. repent. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. In your hands, Almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Receive and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps. Into your hands, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we place ourselves. Amen. Our first reading is from Joel 2, verses 12 and 13. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading is from Psalms 51, verses 1 through 10. And it was written by David after he had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sins are always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken by the, through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I've been thinking a little bit about people as they are thinking about changing their life somehow, right? So, and I can, I, I usually, when I hear these stories, there are, they are big kind of grand stories of people who have changed their lives. So for example, I've had friends who have dealt with addictive behaviors and they've, and they've kind of been able to shift their lives in some ways and, make, and kind of help that make a difference. Or um, people who have had sort of life-threatening illnesses or something like that and it's made them stop and kind of evaluate what has been good or, or even sort of on a more positive end of this, um, people who have done things like gone on mission trips and it's inspired them to you know, spend their life going and working for Habitat or something like that. So kind of big scale things though. But I realize that for most of us, um, when we change our lives, it's usually kind of in small ways, right? Small ways that kind of lead to things that are sometimes larger. So for example, uh, I had a friend who um, ended up being diagnosed as a diabetic. And so he kind of looked at his life and thought, all right, what are the things I need to do? So he obviously cut out some sugar, um, uh, kind of did more walking, and it made a big difference in his life, kind of transformed it a little bit. Or, or for others, uh, uh, people who have kind of looked at their lives and said, you know, I, uh, gosh, I, I don't really like the, the way my life has ended up in this, with these priorities. And so I know somebody who said, you know, I'm going to actually adjust my hours at work um, so that I can spend a little more time with my family. Or, or even on sort of the, the other of losing some behaviors, of kind of recognizing that there are things that we do ah, that just don't mean anything. So I've actually had conversations with people recently about, 
oh, you know, uh, spending less time on my phone and what that means. Or, or even, uh, you know, making sure some of you are doing this. Uh, I know I've heard from others. Um, I've realized that I just have to turn off that 24 hours news network because it's just never ending. It just goes on and on and on. And all it does is make me either feel angry or frustrated or sad or scared or whatever. I mean, there are all these different things that we do to try to change, to try to, to turn towards something that's a little bit more life-giving. Now, I bring that up because today we're talking about repentance. And, and remember, repentance, it, we usually talk about it in terms of like confession and forgiveness of the, of the bad things that we've done and that we, that we need to do differently. But actually, repentance in a word is actually a little bit different. Um, and remember, we've practiced this before. If you've had to sit through it, it's one of my favorite Greek words, right? So it comes from the word metanoia. Say it with me. Metanoia. Some of you didn't say it. I know it. All right, metanoia. We all got it, though. And metanoia really just is about turning. It's about turning in a new direction and obviously a way that gives a little bit more life and a little bit more care, right? And this idea of, of, of turning is obviously all throughout Scripture, but it especially becomes important during the exile. Because if you have been taken from your home, obviously, you're going to have to learn a new way. You're going to have to turn towards something else. Or, or if you've been taken away from, from all the structure that you're used to, right? The, the government that you're used to is no longer there. Or, or the, the way that which you practice your faith is no longer there. What do you do? What are you going to turn towards, right? And so uh, for these people who have gone through the exile, who now live in a new land out, out in Babylon, and they're, they're not sure of what's going on, uh, uh, the te- they knew what to do before. They could go to Jerusalem for this. They, they knew they could go to the temple to worship this way, but now things are different, right? What are we supposed to do now? And so in the midst of that, our first reading from Joel says, return to me. That's what God says, return to me, for I am merciful, I am slow to anger, I am loving, I am caring, all those different kinds of things, return to me, because that's where you will find all of this wonderful blessing in your life. Or in Psalm 51, which by the way, we usually read on Ash Wednesday, just so you're kind of putting it together, um, where, where it goes through all this language of cleansing, right? We, we definitely associate with more of confession and forgiveness, but, but of letting go of all of these things. God, clean me out of all of these kinds of things. And then in, in the end of it, it says, create in me a clean heart, right? So, so now I can be focused on the things that I really, really want. And, and for folks who have gone through the exile, this is God reminding them that they can still be faithful, They can still seek out all those things that that give them life, that give them care, that give them hope, that all of that can even happen in new places, in new ways, in new environments. It can happen over and over and over again. Now we've had, like I mentioned last week, a strange few months, right? Where we've had to learn some new ways, that that things that we've done have gotten kind of shifted and and uprooted than what we're used to. Obviously, uh, I can speak a little bit of of how we've had to be different as a church, right? But there's also been new ways of living, new ways of of working or or going to school or connecting to people, interacting with others, uh, new ways of of going to grocery stores, new ways of, of all kinds of things around us. And, and while it's been difficult, it's caused disappointment and, and sadness and grief. That's why we talked about lament last week, right? It's also, though, given us a new opportunity to learn some things, right? To, to learn some things that we may miss from the way life was before, but maybe just as much some things that we don't miss about the way things were before. Maybe even we've learned some things that we discover that we like a little bit more right now, than we did before. So for example, I know a lot of people I've talked to who have looked at their lives now and and when they would talk about and describe their lives before, they would use one word and that was busy, right? Busy. And they look around now and they think, well, actually this is kind of nice not to be pulled in a million different directions, right? I've actually heard a few people talk about how they are dreading going back to something regular because they're kind of worried that their lives are just gonna get taken over one more time. I've, I've talked to some of us who, are, who have been considered essential, who, who have had to work throughout this whole thing, and, and I, they've felt more valued. This is the part I find really interesting. They have felt more valued and more important by people that they've interacted with and also with the world around them, right? 
that all of a sudden we realize that these people are central to how our lives can function. Others have told me that this has given them valuable time to, to reconnect to their families and friends. Obviously, they recognize the things that have been important, their value in that, or they've discovered, gosh, I get to spend this time doing um, this hobby or activity that I have loved over and over and over again. It's given people renewed energy to focus on things around the world that need changing, right? Someone actually shared this in a poem with me. Uh, uh, it's by a woman named Leslie Dwight, and it's called, um, what if 2020 isn't canceled? I thought this was really interesting. So here's the poem. What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. Now, this poem is obviously not saying, and, I, and I'm not trying to say, that it doesn't matter all these things that, it, that we've gone through, right? That it doesn't matter that we, it doesn't mean that we needed all the struggles or the pains that we've dealt with. Whether uh, watching hundreds of thousands of people die from the coronavirus around the world, it didn't need that. Or, or the death of George Floyd, which has caused people to cry for change as well, right? But I do think that in the middle of all of that, God gives us a chance. God, God calls us, God, I think God wants us to repent. And, and by that, to turn towards things that bring a little bit more compassion, that, that bring a little bit more relationship, that bring a little bit more love and life into our lives, but also into this world around us. To ask the question about the things that we do, are they bringing more life for us or for people around us? Are they doing that? Can we turn towards those things? I mean, it's the work that is central to who Jesus is, that Jesus declares from the very beginning, as you heard in our gospel reading today, uh, to be this light that shows up for people who are dealing with shadow and darkness and harsh times, and to say, here in Jesus, we find more life, more light for this world, and that even throughout his life, we see that even in the tragedy of the crucifixion there, we see the way to eternal life. And so, because we don't get a chance to think about this very often, I want us to take 30 seconds again. I know, you're getting ready for this, right? 30 seconds and to think about this. You've had to do some things different over the last few months. So, what would you like to take with you? What would you like to bring along as you have learned how to find a little bit more life in what we are facing right now? So, take 30 seconds, and then we're going to come back together, and we're going to pray. Let us pray. Oh God, turn us. Turn us toward you, toward that which illuminates us, the relationships, the passions, the cares of our lives. Turn us toward you, toward seeking out more life for all those in our world who need it. Guide us to repent. In the name of Jesus Christ, whose ministry and life was turning us toward you and the life-giving blessing you give us each and every day. Amen.
Let us confess our sins and receive forgiveness in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now let us continue with the prayers, and this week we are led by our 5 p.m. worship service team. Greeting people of God, today we are blessed to be led in our prayers by our 5 a.m. worship team. This is including our assisting ministers and readers. And so, let us begin. Led by your Holy Spirit, let us join together to pray for the church, this nation, and all those in need, so that we might turn to you in your ways of justice, life, and love. Turn us, O God, grant peace to this world. Guide the leaders of the nations in your ways to bring evil, discrimination, and violence to an end. We especially pray for our country, the United States, President Trump, and other national, state, and local leaders. Sustain them with health, strength, and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Turn us, O God. In the midst of this ever-changing world, we ask your comfort and healing for all who are troubled or ill. Make us disciples who serve the people, showing your love and mercy in action. We pray especially for Bob, Janice, Bill, Nancy, Christopher, Lori, and Aaron, Millie, Doyle, Lana, Betty, Evalu, Tim, Kathy, Jennifer, Nicole, and those with chronic ailments, including cancer, diabetes, MS, dementia, and Parkinson's. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Turn us, O oh God. We give thanks for all those who have died awaiting the resurrection. May we, with them, see your light shining on our souls and celebrate our communion with the saints in heaven and earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, we pray for your church in its many forms, and we especially pray for the Reverend Kim Crawford and the Reverend Henry Martinez, that God will further their work with the young adults in global mission in Australia. We pray for the Texas Lutheran University Campus Ministry, and we pray for a Triumphant Lutheran Church, that your presence will shine and your spirit move among us as we go in Christ to serve others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those whose work puts them in harm's way for the sake of others. We pray especially for health care workers, truck drivers, grocery store employees, janitors, trash collectors, food service workers, government employees, and delivery people. 
We pray for first responders, fire, police, and EMS personnel, and the members of the United States Armed Forces deployed and stationed around the world. And we name especially Michael Andrea, friend of the Abrams, Logan Ayala, grandson of the Madisons, Grant Bilek, cousin of Corina Leachman, Nick Turner, friend of Evan Oberg, Adrian Salazar, grandson of Abel and Paula Salazar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have birthdays and anniversaries this week. And we especially pray for John, Alex, Emily, Mika, Tristan, and Helen. And for Rick and Lisa, Skip and Karen, Dennis and Mary, Bill and Kathy, Lars and Mary, Tim and Sheila, Chris and Silky, Lauren in your mercy. Your Lord, Your Lord, our prayer. Our prayer. Holy Parenting God, on this cultural celebration of Father's Day, we remember before you all of our fathers those who brought us into this world, those challenged with raising us to mature life and service within your kingdom, and those whom you have called home for eternal life. We pray your eternal blessing upon fathers everywhere, those who are bringing children into this world, those who are challenged with raising their own, those fathers who raise and care for children brought into the world by others, those whose hopes for fatherhood have been unfulfilled, as well as those who finish their paternal vocation and who with Adam the father and Moses the deliverer and Gideon the judge and Abraham the patriarch and Joseph the stepfather of Jesus are resident with you in your eternal home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 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 And for what else do the people of God pray? Heavenly Father, I join with my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. I lift up our nation to you. I claim your personal choice for every office in the land. Give us leaders who have willing hearts to listen to you and to follow your will. Remove any who refuse. Inspire your church continually with grace and unity. Give us leaders who do what is right in the church so that we can live in peace, honesty, godliness, and the word will go forth freely throughout the world. Thank you, Lord, that people all across the land are repenting and turning to you. Our finest hour as a nation is just beginning. Thank you for watching over and protecting us during this time. I declare that we are and we remain one nation under God. I give you all the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And now let us share the peace of God with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now uh, let us take some time to share that peace that God has blessed us with, with those around us and with those around in our community. Peace, peace. be with you. As a child, he sat me on his knee, held me close and dried my tears, read me stories, wrote me piggyback. When I was frightened, he calmed my fears. He was a prince to me, my shining knight, always there.
God, you open the doors of heaven, giving us every generous and perfect gift from above. Lift our eyes from the food that perishes and nourish us now with the food that endures for eternal life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so as we remember the promise of new life that we receive in this meal, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us join together and share in this meal that God has given us. Uh, just a reminder that if you have those in your household who do not take communion, this is a wonderful time to bless them. And so you can make the sign of the cross on their forehead and say, um, God loves you or uh, you are God's special child. Whatever you would like to say at that point. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Now let us hear the communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious God, in this meal you have rained down the true bread from heaven, the body and blood of your beloved Son. So by his promise, bring us to abide in him and he in us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, let us continue with the announcements. Hello and welcome to this week's announcements. First of all, uh, we want to thank everyone for their amazing generosity towards the TLC CARES Fund. Uh, this is the CARES Fund that is going to help people who are in need uh, during this uh, pandemic, during this crazy time for us. Uh, we have over $13,000 in this CARE Fund, and so we wanted to say uh, a thank you to everyone who has been so generous with uh, sharing the resources that they have. And we also want to encourage anyone that needs these resources to reach out to Pastor Aaron or myself uh, to inquire about what sort of help that we can provide. Uh, we have a Financial Peace University class, in-person class, starting this week. It will begin on June 21st, Sunday at 4.30, and it's in the gathering place. Contact Rob Crow if you have any questions. You can also go to the FPU website to look up the class to get registered for that. Uh, Financial Peace University is an excellent class to gain confidence with uh, being good stewards of your money and how you can best use your resources. Uh, this upcoming week uh, is our communion pickup, communion element pickup. And so on Thursday evening and on Saturday morning, you will have an opportunity to come and get communion elements for the next couple weeks. We are continuing our Vacation Bible School registration. You can go to triumphantlutheran.org slash VBS for all that kind of registration. And then finally, we have our, uh, for our senior high youth, we are going to have a, uh, what we are calling the 2020 NADA mission trip. And it is an opportunity for us to gather and to spend a few days together serving our local community. And so you will have an opportunity to sign up for that uh, coming up this week. I will send out an email to all the senior high parents with registration instructions for that. Those are our announcements for this week. Let us continue on with the benediction blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No matter where we find ourselves today, the mission remains the same. We grow in Christ to serve others. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.